Lost Ark. It's going to contribute to a lot of lost time. So Lost Ark getting released on February 11th. Uh, now, if you buy the Founders Pack, that's the uh, thing you pay them extra money for. And uh, they just release the game early, basically. That's the scam. I'm going to buy it. Uh, you get to play the game three days early. Pay to but win. This world, Founders Pack. This Arcasia is more dangerous than you could ever imagine. I feel like the trailer sucks. I'm gonna be honest. I think that it's so bad. They should have, they should have just like showed all the features with like a few ominous scenes. Uh, yeah, like that, like doing combos into a group of NPCs that are just perma stunned. What is this Diablo three? I yeah, I think the trailer sucks. They could have done a much better job with it. And like I played, I I actually um myself and uh, the pink sparkle. Uh, two of us, uh, we played this game together whenever it came out on beta. Both of us actually liked the game a lot. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, as a lot of you guys know her as Izzy. This is a bad trailer. The game is much better than what this trailer would make you believe. The Pink Sparkle, yes. The, the Pink Sparkle. The, so many games are with the gates are open and hell is coming through. Well, yeah, it sounds cool. No, yeah, it's not a good representation. Like, I mean, this game has, like, crazy-ass PvP. It has really cool boss fights. It has a housing system that's very expansive. It's got professions that are in-depth. Uh, it has a lot of character customization. Uh, it also has, I don't know if I said, like, the really cool raids. I've seen a number of the raids that they have at max level. Uh, it also has, uh, what's it, like, a sailing around on, like, a ship and shit like that. Uh, like, it's got a... It's the most ambitious isometric game that I've ever seen, really. And, like, I, I think that it's hard to compare it with PoE because PoE has, like, a much different goal. But uh, it's, it's I would say, like, a as ambitious as PoE. Oh, and by the way, I, I, I know that there are some people who think that it's pay to win. Other people think it's not pay to win. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to argue about if it's pay to win or not anymore because I know that there were, like, weird translations. People were taking things from what the Russian website was going to have, etc. Uh, I'm just going to play the game whenever it comes out, and if it's pay to win, I'll probably just stop playing it because it will not be fun. That's it. So uh, I'm going to play the game, see what it's like. If it's pay to win, we're just going to stop playing it, and, and that's it. Jeez, this is, it looks, looks so bad. So it's like they brought out Final Fantasy XIV 15 Before years ago. All is lost. Yeah, I mean, I played the game. It was really cool. And, and nobody downvoted the videos. So, I mean, it, it's got to be... Uh, it's got to be really popular. This is what the boss fights... I've showed this before, so I'm not going to get into it too much. Like, they should have just taken this YouTube video and played it as a trailer. It would have been better than what they decided to put together. But it's okay. I mean, the thing is, I'm excited for the game. Uh, I just wish the trailer was a better representation of it. Because uh, I do think this game has a lot of potential. And, and it, it's a really cool game. This is what we could have had with Deathwing. You understand that? This is what we could have had at Blizzard. But instead, they were stealing breast milk. Uh, this is what this is what it could have been fucking having. And I'm, I'm pissed, man. I'm pissed. Oh, it's click to move? Yeah, it's click to move. I have no problem with it being click to move. I played PoE. I played Diablo 3. I have zero problem with click to move. If you do, it is what it is. But I think that if you want to give the game a try, 
I thought I wouldn't like it with the click to move stuff with Diablo 3 and it turned out that I got really used to it very quickly. So yeah, if, if you don't like it though, I mean, fuck, don't play it. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the game is. I'm not gonna watch the Limit Max video. Uh, actually, I'll see how long it is. Um, uh, if it's more than 10 minutes, I'm probably not gonna watch it. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, okay. Look, can somebody tell Max that you only need to do eight minutes now to put extra ads in? Like, we don't actually have to have seven extra seconds. Yeah, uh, we, we... I don't know. Maybe he's just talking this long. Like, he plays WoW, so he's probably used to talking for a long time. Yeah, we only need to do eight minutes now, man. It's fine. Uh, nobody's taking any damage? Well, no shit! Because they've wiped on it 50 times! Because they know what to do! Because if people are taking damage, they, the fight, the video wouldn't be 21 minutes long! It would be like 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Everybody's taking damage. They're dying. Yeah, I, he's going to say what I'm going to say. It's not really a whole lot that I I, I can really add on to that or, or not. Search how difficult is raiding in Lost Ark. Um, you know what? I actually do want to watch this. Hey, everybody. Today, I'm breaking down what an endgame encounter is like in Lost Ark Korea currently. The fight we're looking at is the fifth gateway of the Legion Commander Albuquerque's raid. This weekly raid is split into six different boss encounters with checkpoints to stop and save the lockout after completing the second and fourth boss encounters. You can reform and pick up where you left off with the same party members or switch it up with replacements if they're also at the same checkpoint. Loot's also received at each checkpoint in equal proportions, so if you complete phase two, you'll earn 33% of the potential materials for crafting the new set, Phase 4 nets you 66% and phase 6 gets you 100%. Okay. Gateway 5 pits you against the Queen of Nightmares herself, Abushud. He has 23 billion HP in this encounter, evenly split into 200 individual lines of HP. This helps us more easily identify when certain gimmick mechanics will occur at. He has a total of 31 different patterns. So I guess like the number there functions as like a phase counter. Yeah, he talks a little bit too fast. I wish this, I, I wish this video was 10 minutes and 7 seconds used in any random order between major HP thresholds. But we'll just be covering the major gimmicks though to keep this video concise. At 180 lines of health, the first major gimmick happens. All eight players are given a black or white shape. There are four shapes, so two people will get the same shape, one in black and one in white. At periodic intervals, shapes will be summoned while you're DPSing Abushud that will float across the screen. You must collect a certain number of shapes depending on which shape you were assigned at the start of the mechanic. Circles have to collect two, squares have to collect four, hexagon six, and star eight. If you collect the wrong color shape, it's considered minus one. There will also be patterns that are needles that travel across the screen, homing in on a player for a few seconds before traveling in a straight line, that if you're hit by it, there's a 50% chance it's either a black or a white shape, uh, so it could help or set you back. The other mechanic are long line telegraphs across the entire map that if you're hit, do the same thing as a needle. Uh, there's two variations of that. One that also summons a needle, which travels in the same direction at a high speed. Holy shit. He has shit. a lower average shot to 140 lines of health while collecting the correct number of shapes for every player. It's common to have the correct number of stacks of your shape, only to get screwed over by the last summoning of shapes. Needles and line telegraphs are around 145 lines. If any of, of the course. players has an incorrect number of stacks when entering the 140 line gimmick, it's a guaranteed raid wipe and you have to start over. At 140 lines, Abershot either has a circle or a cross shape underneath her. This helps us determine where we need to stack with the other player to safely place a symbol on the ground for the next pattern. Before we stack, we have to dodge line laser telegraphs twice, with the second one giving us about a second afterwards to converge with the other player. If done successful, all four players will place a symbol in four sections of the map evenly spaced from each other. That doesn't seem, Albert that actually doesn't seem that hard. Map, and one of the eight players has to guide a certain shaped meteor into the corresponding symbol placed in the previous mechanic. Uh, failing to do that wipes the raid. While doing this, players have to dodge a lot of large AoE telegraphs, the red scary ones that are one shots. Uh, the expanding black hole also has to be avoided, and if it touches another one of the symbols, then it wipes the raid, which is why they have to be placed equally distant apart from one another. If everyone's successful at placing all four meteors, then you proceed to the next phase, which is a burn from 140 lines to 110 lines. At 110 lines, Albershead ports to the center and a short intermission plays. Uh, two large spheres are summoned into the map, and there's also glyphs on the ground which light up that tell us what to do in this mechanic. They indicate the order in which the Holy three major shit. targets have to be neutralized with fatigue damage from our spells. Being inside of order wipes the raid. God, I hope this game is pay to win. Holy fuck. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I hope this is pay to win. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Wow.
Dulong also wipes the raid. At the same time, illusions of Abershad can spawn in up to six positions, three above and three below. It's random. Every illusion that gets summoned has to be countered within a second of it appearing. Failing to do so silences the entire party, which screws up the neutralization and also the illusion blows up and does like 50% of your health. If all the illusions are successfully countered and the three main targets are neutralized in the correct order, then you move on to the next phase. The next phase, the two orbs that were just neutralized create portals that lead to a different cube mini boss in a separate area. To pass the gimmick, one player has to collect 12 white orb buffs in the right portal, and then in the left side portal, four players have to collect three gold orbs each. The 12 white orb player is probably going to have to be a support because the white orbs inflict a DOT, a stacking damage over time debuff on you as you collect each orb. At least one player has to stay outside to deal with Alberset, or else she immediately casts a raid wipe if there's no one in the it's area. It's on. Not collecting the right number of orbs also incurs a raid wipe in the next gimmick. Uh, and also, the this player is that cool. Stays outside fighting her dies, she also kills the raid. During the battle with the cubes, there's also needles and line telegraphs that can reduce the number of orbs you've collected. Needles drop you to zero stacks in the left one, and in the right side room, line telegraphs Holy reduce shit. the number of stacks you've got by one. Once the cubes are defeated, you gotta exit within like two or three seconds, or else it kills you. After all players have exited, Albershead begins the next pattern, which reminds a lot of people of Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. She'll summon a huge ball of energy, and you have to break an HP shield on her. Afterwards, oh, if it actually reminded me from Frieza from Dragon Ball Z, uh, I would just continue talking for the next two weeks and then uh the next week at the same time i would just start the video over and then play the same video again and say the exact same things so that's actually what it would be like lines of light protrudes from eight different positions you have to maneuver into the lines of light to avoid being silenced as there's a neutralization check that has to be cleared you also have to remember what each of these lines of light are because at the end of this pattern after the neutralization check has been succeeded five different safe spots emerge only one of which is correct to stand in the safe one is the one that if you remember there was where no all light. the lines of light emerged yeah. from Amrushed in the previous pattern it will form that shape yeah. If players successfully neutralize the I boss, stand in the correct safe spot, and have the correct amount of orb buffs on 5 players, they'll survive the raid wipe that falls afterwards. After lowering the boss from 110 lines to 90 lines, players are once again assigned shapes from... Well, it's the same thing as the 180 line gimmick. Uh, you have to once again collect the correct amount of shapes by the time you reach 50 lines, while also avoiding a lot more dangerous patterns that begin to emerge at around this point. At 50 lines, you have to once again converge with the other player that has the same shape as you to place the symbols on the ground, but instead of line telegraphs, everyone has to kite four meteor drops. Uh, you have about one second after the last meteor drop to stand within proximity of the corresponding shape to place the symbol. Hopefully at this point, everyone has survived and was able to place their symbol to prevent the last eight player gimmick. Uh, as after you successfully guide these meteors into the correct symbol, it's a burn of the last 50 lines to zero HP against a torrent of even more deadly attacks. If you've managed to claim victory at this point, though, pat yourself on the back uh, because that was the door phase. You defeated and the easy part. The and she takes the battle up in space, and the real battle against the real boss begins at that point. They're gonna add a difficulty mode above that. Oh wow! The thing is, like. Welcome back. This is part two of how difficult is raiding in Lost Ark. Oh this no. Time we're dissecting the finale against the space opera phantom, Alborshud. As a disclaimer, if you're trying to face this boss oh, in the future no. of line, you should stop watching this video as it contains fight spoilers. Otherwise, this is kind of like a guide, but a really terrible one. The video is just meant for entertainment for people what? to hear about mechanics that aren't obvious by just watching the gameplay. At the time what of recording, the this fuck? is the highest level encounter in Lost Ark and the most mechanically complex fight to date. Day okay. 6 is a 20 to 25 minute endurance battle against 28.5 billion HP split across 250 health bars. If you made the DPS check in the previous fight in phase 5, oh, your damage wow. is sufficient to clear phase 6 since there's more damage uptime and a longer fight timer. Yeah, of the course. The work for clearing phase 6 isn't unique, but you're guaranteed two legendary engraving books, additional ancient fragments for crafting, and a small chance of looting the highly coveted Esther Stone. During this battle, Holy fuck, I hope this is pay to win. Oh, this is insane, man. Am I gonna have to do this? 25 minute fight. The thing is, like, I wonder with any fight like this, I wonder, like, what the... Because, like, how many people are they doing this with? It looks like they're doing it with, like, eight people or so. Am I right about this? It's eight people? Like, that's that's 100% uh, easier than doing, like, a Mythic Raid with 20. Because you just have less than half as many people that can fuck it up. So, the checkpoints make it easier. Yeah. Like, you guys obviously are making this out to be like, it's really hard. And it is really hard. But the truth is that 
Like, if unless these mechanics are like one-shotting you, and, and like it one-shots the raid, you can probably recover from some mistakes and get through this, and it's probably not as hard as you might think, but we'll see. They do? Yeah, if they all one-shot you, then it's different. But what I'm saying is like, uh, I've learned with Final Fantasy that, and this is the same with like challenge modes, is you can make much better and much cleaner plays whenever you have a smaller group of people to make decisions. Yeah, you only have to worry about yourself. Yeah, there you go. Necessary for anything in particular, but there are achievements linked to it. You can progress your gear fine by opting to skip this fight and just clearing the earlier fights in the raid for materials. Besides for 27 unique attacks, some of which are strengthened after the second half of the fight begins, there are four major gimmicks that can be tricky to resolve, two which of repeat, and a final desperation attack at 1 HP that's mostly for theatrics. The first major gimmick appears at 225 lines of health. All raiders induce a hallucination and are isolated from the rest of the group, while a shape appears throughout their screen. Memorize this shape, since it'll be important in a moment. A demon spawns in the center tile, checking orbs would reduce your movement speed if you're hit by them, but we can cheese this by standing in a narrow blind spot behind it. Afterwards, <laughs> two rows or columns of the map grid will start to light up, and you must navigate to a spot that isn't lit. This is repeated three times. Okay. While this is happening, you'll occasionally be afflicted with a debuff which flips your controls, symbolized by a purple swirling ball above your head, making your character move in the opposite direction. Oh, of like bro, this reminds me of like that fucking Super Smash Brothers thing. Where, like, you ever have, like, that dickhead friend that, like, plays the ball that turns the screen upside down? Oh, man, it makes me so mad. Learning curve is smooth. It's not that insane whenever you get there. I don't think it probably will be, man. Like, I don't think it's going to be as insane as people are making it out to be. Another difficulty above this, which isn't out yet, it's called Hell Mode. Well, fuck. Most mechanics one-shot the raid. On and off a few times during this. If you're struck by one of the lit-up grid spaces, you'll be killed. After three of these, everyone is released from the hallucination and Albert should teleport to the center. To start releasing the same orbs from before, which reduced movement speed. By hitting her and standing close by, a shape will appear near her. The one player that saw this shape in the hallucination must guide the other seven players to the safe grid spots, as Albert should will repeat the attack again in the same order that they saw it before. Once okay. this is resolved, the players can fight again normally, but the next gimmick appears very shortly. Several tornadoes travel across the map, dealing heavy damage to anyone they touch. A few players have a debuff that can be removed if the tornado touches them, but it's important that they don't remove it. The player still has the debuff and it naturally expires, they're sent to another plane where there's a single black orb. They have a few seconds to destroy it. Should they fail, they're spit back out to join their party and the orb blows up into a swirling vortex, greatly impeding movement and either pushing or pulling players away gradually. Holy this lasts for a fuck. very long time and makes DPSing the boss very difficult, so destroying the orb is important. The more players that lose their debuff by getting hit by a tornado, the more difficult it'll be to break the orb. DPS continues until 188 lines of health. At 188 lines of health, the fight officially begins. Albert oh, right, the right, of course. Intermission plays. Meteors are summoned in, and each of the players is marked sequentially one second apart from one another. The rain map is split into a 3x3 grid. Each grid space has 3 HP. When a blue meteor lands on any of the spaces, it reduces the tile's HP by 1. A player marked by a golden meteor reduces the HP of the tile it lands on by 3, as well as all adjacent tiles by 3 as well. The first player during this mechanic is marked with the golden meteor, while the other 7 are marked with blue ones. The raid must carefully place these meteors in such a way that no more than 3 tiles are destroyed at any given time. When a fourth tile is destroyed, Albershed will immediately perform a raid wipe. Finally, tiles regenerate back into play with full HP 1 minute and 40 seconds after being okay. destroyed. When a tile is destroyed, it also means the map is shrunk as well. Like the first Legion General Vaulton, Players are instantly killed if they're hit by a stagger, knockback, or knocked down while standing near the edge of the map. Jesus. You can fall off the map by getting knocked off, but fortunately the game doesn't let you just walk off. After resolving this mechanic, blue meteors will begin to fall on random party members every one minute, while golden meteors will select a random party member at specific HP intervals, the next which happens at 137 lines. After oh my. 188 lines though, the boss becomes considerably more dangerous. Our moveset is expanded to include several heavy yeah. knockback attacks that are designed to smack players off the map. These are the yellow telegraph attacks. No matter how geared you are, if your reflexes are slow here, you'll face a death by gravity. It's important to understand what super armor options you have in a pinch. You also have to avoid tanking yellow telegraphs as much as possible, since every time you're hit by one, you'll gain an infinite duration debuff, which at three stacks will cause a blue meteor to begin dropping on you. After dealing with the golden meteor, you well, have to survive fuck. for a minute and 40 seconds for the destroyed tiles to respawn before entering the 113 line pattern. This is because you'll want the full map space for what comes next. At 113 lines, a new intermission plays. Holy fuck! Holy 
Players navigate to the center and position to dodge a quick pizza attack and then divide themselves to different parts of the map to avoid the giant palm slam in the center. A black hole forms that gradually pulls players towards it and a huge number of red ores begin flying in from outside of the map towards the center. We can use Esther Shandy here, which is kind of like a party ultimate or a limit break if you're coming from Final Fantasy XIV, to slow down time and assist with dodging these. The red orbs deal heavy Holy damage and inflict a debuff fuck. on the player if they get hit by it. At three stacks of this debuff, the player dies. At the same time, gold orbs will fly in as well. All players have to collect two of these in order to survive the explosion at the end. There will also be four smaller black hole orbs on four of the tiles. Four players have to each enter one of them right before the pattern ends to avoid getting sucked into the center and pulled into another dimension. You have to time this carefully as entering the orb too early won't protect you from getting pulled in. If performed successfully, four players get pulled into the center and sent to a separate plane on the same map, while the four that enter the small black orb stay in the original plane with Abrushut. Eight phantoms of Abrushut appear in the original plane and the four players outside must run close to each of them. If any of the clones turn clockwise or counterclockwise, you've got to notify the team on the inside where that clone is, usually with a ping. This lets them know that the clone will appear on their side shortly at that position the clone that turns clockwise will appear on the other side and must be neutralized within two seconds while a clone that turns <laughs> counterclockwise must be countered when the clone is dealt with properly it drops a golden buff that gives the player in the inner dimension a shield that lets them survive the explosion at the end of the eight clones two will turn and this repeats in a second wave for a total of four clones and four shields oh when my dealt god with properly, allowing all four players inside to survive if a clone isn't properly countered or neutralized not only is a player guaranteed to die since they won't have a shield the clone also drops a blue meteor on the tile that they were on potentially destroying it which can kill players on the outside as they won't be able to see the meteor itself oh the my god takes place on two versions of the same map and so quick communication and cooperation is needed for everyone to survive this from this point onwards most of our random attacks have been strengthened and have additional mechanics that you'll have to deal with the of next course the meteor appears at 87 lines at 66 lines tornadoes will appear again and the debug players once again have to destroy the orb to prevent the vortex from spawning a spawn vortex is especially deadly at this stage of the fight where Abrushut has her expanded strengthened move set there's one final golden meteor at 37 lines after you deal with it and reach 28 lines the dream world pattern repeats and you must once again memorize the shape and the safe spot oh my god it. as part of the map is destroyed at this point it can be tricky to navigate from one side to the other oh. if you manage to prevail at this point you're on the home stretch at 25 lines Abrushut will destroy the four corners of the map you'll no longer kill the entire raid if more than three tiles are broken however as blue meteors are still spawning the map Will gradually get smaller until only the center tile remains the goal is to bring her down to seven lines of health before this happens as the smaller the map is the more likely people are to get knocked off at seven lines of health the final major gimmick begins in an act of desperation Abrashad will begin to summon one last giant meteor designed to wipe out the party oh shit what the fuck bro who thought of this fight She's like sending a black hole or some kind of fucking bullshit. During its slow descent, you had to break through a 22.8 billion HP overshield that she gains or 200 additional lines of health before the meteor lands in two to three minutes. If you're tight on DPS on this point and you were getting close to the 20 minute enrage timer, five minutes are added so you don't have to worry so much about it. And any of the broken tiles <laughs> after the corner ones are brought back into play right away. 200 more lines is ridiculous though and the following mechanic is designed to help you punch through that shield. While battling Abrashut and chipping away the shield, the screen will flash at the one o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock or 11 o'clock positions. This signifies that a counter meteor will be flying in towards the center of the map this will happen five times once in each direction and one more time in one random direction when the meteors arrive they'll either flash red or blue blue ones have to be countered while red ones have to be ignored altogether if a red one is countered it'll explode dealing heavy aoe damage to players and likely knocking them off the map when a blue meteor is successfully countered though the player receives a buff that when expires fires a long can you blue. res people like if somebody dies can you like just res them no oh fuck that'll deal about 14 lines of damage to Abrashad's health. In total, five rounds of meteors will appear, of which at least 15 will be counterable, and 14 is practically required to meet the damage check. Have people in each of the quadrants with excess players prepared to assist in case two blue meteors appear in one quadrant. If you fail to break the shield, the final meteor lands, killing everyone. But if you succeed, then buffs will scatter across the map. Players only need to pick up one, which will grant them a shield that lets them survive the meteor. Finally, bring Abrashad down to one HP, and the last gimmick occurs. An orb spawns at the seven o'clock position, which she summons in 
in order to wipe out the remaining players. The orb has to be destroyed with normal damage before she can. However, it regenerates 40 million HP per second. As you hit the what? orb, buffs will pop out of it, which when collected greatly increase your damage output, stacking up to nine times. Pick up as many orbs as you can and then nuke her last attack faster than it can regenerate, bringing an end to the fight once and for all. Please stop watching here if you want to avoid story cinematic spoilers. And that's it. While there will be raids in the Holy future, the tougher raid is definitely the most visually stunning. 40 Sometimes million HP we'll also a second. Have to deal with this encounter on Hell Mode, which has equalized gear, tighter DPS checks, additional mechanics, and a prestige achievement for completing both this encounter as well as the previous one from the other video back to back with no restarts and not a single death across the entire party. I look forward to showing you all that encounter whenever it comes. <laughs> Wait. I was like, what the fuck? Wait, she not dead. He spent 23 minutes on a phase, she not dead. Oh my god. That's the raid team. It's just some big fucking cat. Oh, there she is. I have to admit, having the Final Fantasy music in the background makes this better. It actually makes it, like, it, it makes it so much better. Yeah, this is so much better. Okay, uh, so, uh, let's see how housing is in Lost Ark. Yeah, l let's look at housing. Yeah, so, uh, take a look at that maybe instead. This is a bunch of menus. Where's the house? This is a bunch of fucking menus. Where's the house? Okay, this is not gonna work. I'll figure it out myself. Mobile game housing? I have no idea. Okay, so look, the game to me, I think that I, I, I'm glad that I watched that video because that video told me one thing and that's that it's pretty much time for me to go to bed. That I, I quit Final Fantasy. Yeah, I'm a Lost Ark Andy now. I, I'm, I'm gonna play that instead. Uh, so look, I, I think it's fucking badass. I, I, I think this is super cool. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe one day I'll do that fight.